I'm here with various makers that all worked on this great project that's in the background. So it's the exploded view and it's uh, uh, well, a tiny sort of a tiny house, but in a different uh, construction. Um, and they collaborated with over 60 partners to create it and it was presented during uh, Dutch Design Week last year, which of course was a really different edition because of COVID and all the measurements, but um, it was exhibited and now it's exhibited right here in Blue City. So that gives us a great opportunity to talk about all the questions that the project uh, raises and uh, all the goals that it has. So welcome to the three speakers. Uh, Pascal, you're one of the, or actually you're the head designer of the project. And Marianne, you also collaborated on the project as a uh, designer and an uh, entrepreneur with your company Blue Blocks. Yes. And Eva, you are the, one of the founders of Waterweg. Yes. And you also have a part in this, uh, in this great installation. So, um, by the way, if you feel like you have a question, you can uh, put it in the Mentimeter. So then, somehow along the way, I hope uh, to also get back to the speakers and with your questions as well. So feel free to add to the conversation. Pascal, let's start with you, because this like last Dutch Design Week was a really big moment, although different probably than imagined. Yes. You still got the chance to present the project, which is amazing. Yeah. Yes. Tell us about it. Yeah. Yeah. Really glad that we at least could finish and present the, yeah. the project. Definitely. That's that for, for sure. Mm. And of course, the focus was totally different because there was no physical audience at all. Um, but we were invited in different talks and presentations, and we met actually a lot of new, interesting people in the yeah. work field. Yeah. And that was great. And of course, we, uh, we uh, created this installation um, in the first lockdown. Yeah, because can you tell us a little bit about what the installation is? Yeah, it's... What are uh, we looking at? It's a, a, a scale model, mm -hmm. one by four, of a, a real uh, family house. Yeah. Um, and in this house, uh, we present uh, different uh, bio-based materials and circular methods. And it's explored hue. It means there are so many possibilities and also uh, material streams mm -hmm. To, to use as, uh, as building material. And like, for instance, the kitchen, it's made from, uh, from food wastes, and we have the bedroom it's made. It's eggshells, right? Or is there are eggshells egg and- in there as well, I Yes, eggshell tiles and, uh, and popcorn walls. Um, you, you, I, I mean, at home, unfortunately, you cannot see it, but it really looks amazing as well, so. Yeah. <laughs> I, think, no, but I, I, mean, I think that's really important to mention. Like, it re looks really cool. Yeah, I think it's, it's like we each room has its own thematic or material group mm. and to also because there are so many innovations but to collect them together to present them together you make the statement so much stronger yeah um, and like we have also of course a lot of materials from uh, from uh, uh, water of water links yeah like seaweed and algaes and, yeah we're going uh, to to talk about that later on yeah. yes yes and um, yeah textile they, I think we Some have also we also streams. have textile mat material because it's a very big waste stream yeah. and like the bedroom we made from only uh, textile materials because the most of them they we just burn and mm. you can just create uh, upgrade it to to building materials. Yeah. Why we choose for this family house? Because um, also to make the, the connection to, to, to everybody, because we all live in, in a house or in an apartment, to make this really... Um, um, Tangible somehow. Yeah, or... daily, daily link, and not yeah. only to present to the, to the work field of the professional world, but we are all also just living somewhere, yeah. and, and, and we spend a lot of materials and, and waste. So it's also and a storytelling project. Exactly. To, um, and of course, also to show that it can be very beautiful to live in a bio-based house, um, because that's really important. As yeah. a designer, we should. Well, I'm convinced, De <laughs> definitely convinced, yeah. So yeah. Um, as I already mentioned, you've worked together with researchers, policy makers, designers, and then in, the, in total over 60 partners. Yes. How does that work, working with so many different parties on one, one project? Um, the good thing is um, you need a project to, to, to create this network and collaborating mm. because just to bring 
uh, people together, um, it's not working. You really, you really you need, need a concrete, a concrete goal, or... goal. Yeah, yes, I think that's the important first step to, to make. Um, of that's the, the vision we have for Biobase Creations and our mm. team. We always try to create network network around the project. Yeah. Um, but let you see, there are different kind of uh, collaborators. It means also a different kind of uh, of, of um, how to say uh, communication and. Um, we spend hundreds of hours to communicate because it's a, yeah there are a lot of lot of people a lot of companies yeah um, but like like with the material designers we we uh, we just we just motivated like let's let's scale up also for this one by four scale it's mm -hmm. for some uh, some uh, innovations it's already a, a bigger yeah. yeah and uh, was was that like a challenge for most of them to for some of them, okay, it's, the uh, it's a challenge, yeah, sure. And, uh, and, and, and the challenge is to, to go to the one by one scale, of course, but it's, it, it's step by step. Yeah. Um, but the thing is like, um, um, in general, we try to, to, to discover the, the power and the, the profession from each collaborator, mm -hmm. but also to motivate them to uh, share their uh, weakness or the weak points from I mean, not personal-wise, but just professional-wise. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because um, as non-profit organization, we can ask that. Um, and uh, our vision is if everybody share his knowledge, but also the, 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 the weakness, yeah. we can help each other. And so you to can make learn the, together. And to make the network together stronger. Yeah. And um, that's what we try in general with all the, the collaborators. And was there a particular way that you tried to, to facilitate this exchange of knowledge or insights? We have partner meetings like each two months yeah. and we have also like more the, the, the knowledge partners also uh, s specific meetings um, to, bring, to bring it together and after a time we can just step out and everybody just find his own way in the network. All that's, the coalitions are already yes, starting to form. It's already start, yeah. yeah. That's well, we have two people that we can ask about this <laughs> process as well, who collaborated. <laughs> so, uh, Marianne, I would like to, Marianne Kuipers, I would like to start with you. You also brought along some material. So, uh, you collaborated and you, uh, within this project from your own company, Blue Blocks. Can you just briefly tell the people at home what Blue Box is all about? Yeah, Blue Box is a company that um, aims to design waste out of systems by using uh, unused residual streams. Uh, valorize them and maybe uh, utilize them in another sector or industry where they uh, then where they originally came from. Yeah. Um, one of the materials or the, the material that um, we made for the exploded view is sea wood. It's a board panel. It's a stiff material, hard material yeah. um, made out of seaweed fibers. The intention is to do that after the nutri nutrients have been extracted out of the seaweed then 70 to 80 percent of the plant material remains. And that will be a waste if we uh, incinerate that for energy or it, yeah. Yeah, it's also still useful, but uh, in the ladder of the circular economy, we thought uh, that uh, we might try to store, uh, store the uh, captured carbon that, uh, sea that seaweed eats during growing uh, through photosynthesis for a longer period of time. So that, that the knife cuts on two sides, yeah. we have a uh, bio-based, biocircular material for the building industry uh, and using a material that also while growing already captures CO2 and yeah. for example uh, has several advantages as it does not need fresh water or no. uh, uh, adds uh, more pressure on so land it for example. people and climates and offers yeah, different that's, that, that was the solutions. main intention, yeah, still is. Yeah, because yeah. obviously that's one of the main challenges that we have in the Netherlands. Yeah. So also in the construction sector still being quite traditional in the way that they work most of the time. And then obviously yeah, like disruptors <laughs> or pioneers like you are uh, showing the different possibilities that, that are out there. Yeah, or at least um, I'm, I'm, I'm a disruption, but in, a, in a, as seamlessly as possible, as seamless yeah. as possible, because um, trying to turn a whole sector upside down 
is for innovations, for radical new innovations, maybe the difficult path to go. Mm -hmm. Whereas the, the, the industry does things in a certain way because it works. So, you, so if you you're going yeah, to say, you need to do something different now, yeah, yeah. Uh, here's my new material without So it's about proof. maneuvering within the, like the paths that are already there, but then also bringing inside, like inside uh, yeah, because we, uh, we don't want, I also do not want to live in a house that crumbles after no. 20 years, uh, falls apart. Mm. So uh, in that sense, uh, the new materials have, I think, a sort of reversed burden of proof. It's, it's, uh, it's guilty, less, uh, <laughs> yeah. unfunctional unless proven otherwise. Yeah. So I see that more as a job to do than uh, as a problem. And it's my job more maybe than the, the building industry sector. Yeah. So. And one, one question before I go to Eva. So um, I read somewhere that like one of your ideas or slogans is to understand, make it by hand. Yes. I, th I really like that. Can you explain your thoughts behind that? Yes, well, yeah, for, I am a design engineer, so it, it's also my main knowledge and skill, I mm. think, skill set. But um, yeah, even though I think uh, talking about the subject is very important and thinking about uh, uh, challenges uh, surrounding climate and uh, the, the building challenge that we have is really important, but you just need to do it. And um, starting small, I just really try to understand what you're doing before you think about, uh, okay, so now I'm going to turn the building sector upside yeah. down. Understanding is really important. So first the material and the second part for now is the main challenge uh, is to understand the application and the criteria from the user side. Better. Okay, yeah. So if, if there is a match, then yeah, we don't have to talk a lot. Then no. the, the choices will be easy to so make. So that's, that's the focus yeah. right now? Yeah. Interesting. Eva? Yes. Yes, you also brought along a, yeah, I brought an example. So can you tell us a bit more about Waterweg uh, and what it is that you do? Yes. Uh, so what we do is that we make these bricks uh, or tiles, and they're made out of dredge sediment, so that's mud from the bottom of rivers. Yeah. Uh, and every year, around 10 million cubic meters of this 10 mud, million. Yeah. Wow. Well, uh, okay. Get taken out of rivers and canals. So mm -hmm. just the mass that you see, or any river that you see, if boats uh, boats have to keep going through, or if that's what we say needs to happen, then you have to dredge it almost every eight years. But that dredge is a material that's very muddy. And often, especially in cities, there's no purpose for the dredge. Uh, and right now, it's used for nature restoration, but often it's not really nature restoration, but just a place to dump because yeah. it has to go somewhere. So um, they basically don't know what to do with it. They don't know what to do with it. I think that's the main conclusion. What do they do with it right now? Do they put it in trucks and move it somewhere? Yeah, they put or? it in trucks, so they put it wet in trucks, so you're moving, you're moving water to a depot, and then at a depot it's being uh, dried, and then after it's being dried, it's sometimes moved to a store, like to a facility okay. where, it, where it's stored, or it's used uh, under roads, for example, mm -hmm. or it's uh, put somewhere in nature, uh, under the name of nature restoration, and new nature is created. Uh, but often that's not good for nature. So you see that right now there's not really so a solution of what we do with it. Yeah. But we sometimes also do it with, with it when it's really contaminated, it goes to um, just a lake somewhere. Uh, and that's then where it's um, and uh, you being dumped. You, you thought we can do differently. We can do it differently. And we mostly saw that it was such a headache uh, for everyone, for water boards, and in the end also for all of us because we're paying taxes in the Netherlands. And if you yeah. pay taxes, you need to make, you also pay for this dredge problem. Uh, yeah, it's. <laughs> I've never thought about that. No, yeah. <laughs> next time you'll you'll pay your uh, waterschafsbelasting. You'll I'll you think, think about, about it. Definitely, it. Yeah. But what we so we said, okay, what can we do with with this muddy waste stream? And in Dutch, it's even called bakker, which literally mm. means like it's it's uh, it's waste. Like throw it away. It's not yeah. useful. Uh, so what we did is that we started thinking, okay, what other problems are there in the city related to water? And that's when we came up with this, with the idea of how, why don't we make a climate adaptive product from a waste stream from water? Mm -hmm. So these tiles are not um, uh, water passing yet, but uh, in our design, we make sure that the tiles in the future will be water passing. So when it rains, water will be able to permeate into the ground yeah. uh, instead of going to the sewage system. Because in Dutch cities, you see that around 95% uh, of the center, city centers are tiled, which means uh, water has no place to yeah. go, which mm. leads to, um, uh, it leads to more, like the, the, it will, the ground will slowly sink little by little. Yeah. Uh, and it's bad for biodiversity because it's so dry. 
Um, so in everything we, we do, we try to look for a holistic solution between yeah. not only looking at the circular bio base, but also looking at okay, what other problems are there that you can use. Well, that we can use, for... yeah. And where is this in the, in the beautiful house that we see? You can see it right behind the black panels. Ah, over here. Yeah. yeah. Um, and um, yeah, that's where we're, we're now. Unfortunately, we only have a few tiles here because the production that we, we are doing um, got postponed a bit due to COVID. Yeah. Um, but we'll, we hope that by March we've made um, 200 square meters of paved material uh, and we'll put it down somewhere in, in the north of Rotterdam as well. Nice, to test. awesome. Yeah. yeah, so that's what we're doing. And talking about scale, um, yeah. Pascal, you already mentioned that sometimes for uh, pioneers this can be quite tricky, especially in the startup phase. Yeah. How big can you go and how do you yeah. connect to the sector and maybe to the path that, that's, that's already there? Yeah. Um, do you have any thoughts on that or, or experiences from your own projects that you do? Yeah, like, like experiences, but I feel like the most innovations are more on the um, textile or fashion mm -hmm. part or yeah. furniture part. Um, sometimes I miss the innovation at more a building, on the building side. And of course, it's the normal logical way to, to develop from a small sample mm -hmm. to something bigger, Trial to error. one by four scale, one house of one room to go yeah. to one house and, 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 and so further on. But um, also the, the dream and the desire, the desire to, to really create um, with bio-based creation on this scale, what I like to do as, as, uh, as a base designer, as a set designer, um, that's sometimes what I miss in, in, the, in, 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 in the architecture world. And, um, yeah, that's that's one thing, and um, it it needs time. But like also like for architects, it should be good to to yeah. start to experiment with one floor, and not try to analyze the materials. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Still, still yeah. that you can produce hundreds of them yeah. because it's not working. So use like use the little bits that you step, have to see what it does. Just step by step, and you can take it again uh, out again and try try the the, the, the next the the yeah. yeah. The, the, the next step in, yeah. in that case, it, yeah, it, it's, it needs more spontaneous way of, yeah. of development. Playful, like, yeah. 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 So and what's your experience yeah. with that, Marianne? Because yeah. you also really collaborate with the construction world a lot. Yeah, well, I would love to do more of that. Okay, <laughs> shout, really out, <laughs> shout out to the people. <laughs> open if you call. have any ideas. <laughs> yeah. Since I'm here. Uh, because I really think it's important to understand for whom you're doing this. Yeah. The material in itself, has only value is it if it's implemented. Yeah. And implementation means that somebody, yeah. the market accepts it. And acceptance means something from the other, not mm -hmm. my offering alone. Uh, but I fully agree with Pascal mentions. I see, I see it also very simple. If you have a national soccer team, you also don't put your juniors there <laughs> on their first <laughs> training. Yeah. yeah, so you have yeah. to prove bit by bit. So that's what I also meant with the reverse burn of proof. Just show it first on small scale that it can be done. So that's why I think this is really powerful because it's tangible and it's materialized already. It's not just, yes, this is a material, but you already can imagine how it could be applied. Yeah. This is not the final answer. It's just steps in between. And, mm. and if this works, then you can talk about it, you can improve it and then take the next step. And yeah. then you can, they can take secure steps towards yeah. change. I think. And do you have concrete ideas of what, what it would take to create this sort of mindset? Yeah, I think it also comes from both ways. So you, you need to have the, the material there. So you have something tangible and yeah. concrete. And that's what also Pascal said. In Inspirational the, in the examples. You have something concrete to work on because we can talk for hours, but if we, yeah. if we don't make something, that's also, I think my quote more than yeah. anything else. Make something so you understand it and yeah. you start small. And then when you really understand it, you can scale up. Build it from there. Yeah. And build from there. But sometimes I think the industry can be more ambitious. I think still sometimes there, there, there is some space for innovation, but mm -hmm. especially innovation with building materials. And that what makes it so difficult is that you want something down. Uh, yeah, it has to be strong for 50, 60 years. But some, it, I do feel it's frustrating sometimes that there is not a lot of space within these industries to innovate because it's often very focused on what is there, we have norms about uh, paving yeah. on the streets in the Netherlands, but these norms are set based on concrete because we have concrete, but yes, not yeah. no. necessarily because we need that material. So I think sometimes it, it also requires us to 
rethink about how we want to use our spaces yeah. and how flexible we want to be with our spaces and uh, and then try to think differently about what norms we set for the built environment and i don't say, i don't want to put the whole Netherlands down with these <laughs> tiles because i don't think that's a good idea but i think there it's nice to have more a space to put those down and to experiment a bit yeah, more. Yeah, different yeah. frameworks so you can actually yeah. experiment. I also yeah. agree with that. We yeah. need to have more experimental space so we can offer the proof. Yeah, yeah. precisely. Yeah. 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 Otherwise, you can so never allow us to prove that it can work. Yeah. And then there's trust, and then uh, and then we then and we can yeah. move yeah. forward. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. It's not only the responsibility of the of the designers of the startups. No. Of, this is yeah. a, a very good awareness, but. It should be a, a more common um, uh, responsibility. Yeah. Also, like bigger infra infrastructure companies or building uh, companies should invest more in, yeah. in in these materials because, like now, we were joking about a big press. The the, the most materials in the also in this in this uh, scale model yeah. are just pressed. But the the most designers I know. They, 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 they are still fighting with smaller, smaller presses and we, we need a big industry press, two by three meters, yeah. so we can really scale up faster. And now yeah. some designers in just invest by, by themselves, but personal money sometimes. Yeah. It's, they, we, we need bigger investments. Yes, uh, yeah. and it's not so hard to do that, no. actually. One sec, because I'm going to say to the people again, if you are watching and you would like to ask a couple of questions to these wonderful people here, feel free. There is a Mentimeter link under your screen, uh, as I mentioned before, so you can put your question in there and then I will not, I will have to look at my phone, but <laughs> it's not because of uh, my interest, but because the question will come <laughs> up in my phone, so I can ask them. So let me know if you have any questions um, and then We'll continue for now. Yeah. So uh, yeah, we need more investments. So there, I think it's a trust thing. Like if you if you see the proof, you see what it can do. Yeah. And also if you feel the moral, I don't know, or the like if the the, the future, the sustainable future is 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 not something that's only from pioneers or pioneers, but that's something that we all feel is the right way to do. Then we could create different possibilities. But then. Is there still a gap between the investments or the people that maybe have the money to make this this scale possible and and the pioneers? Or do you is there do we, do we miss some sort of connection now, right now? I think there are a lot missing links still. Mm -hmm. um, let's let's say um, if you really want produce on a bigger scale, bio-based um, yeah. products, houses, whatever, mm -hmm. there there should be a, um, a a better collaboration with. Uh, water management, let's say, yeah. these both materials, um, but also with agriculture. Yeah. Farmers should build their an opposite because they are now so different uh, businesses, but it really needs to connect yeah. to scale up. Yeah, also because of the waste flows. Yeah, that yeah, are so but, important. yeah waste flows, but also um, when we choose for producing bio based materials, mm -hmm. to use land for bio based materials yeah. and then for food. Yeah. Because B uh, building materials are now really low on the on the on the how to say on the ladder, mm -hmm. but um, if if producing building materials also goes about the water quality, um, CO two, um, then it means maybe it should be much higher on the ladder, yeah. and it's yeah. it's about value also. Definitely, yeah. And, yeah. Yeah, that's and about make... rethinking value and what value exactly is. Yeah. exactly. Yeah. It's yeah. not so simple. You can just compare. Um, a seaweed panel with a, with a regular MDF no. panel, it's, <laughs> it's much more nuanced yeah. uh, and, and yeah. um, to, to, to have the, the, the good value yeah. about it. Yeah. 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 But I think Marianne's product is a perfect example of how you, it's also, I think a lot of these materials here, they're a lot more holistic and integrated. Mm -hmm. the, their approach is completely different because what Marianne was talking about also, by extracting our nutrients, that's also it's also a step. So you're trying to create value at all these different levels, yeah. and you can compare uh, uh, getting building materials from all over the world to a country, and then just making one product out of it with a product that uh, gets their waste stream locally and produces it into something. That's also why you can price them the same way because mm -hmm. there are so many different types of value that you're trying yeah. to add. Yeah. yeah. Also, they, I think s to valorize them separately yeah. is more complex actually than to see it more yeah. holistically. 
that's what you also mean the links are so important if you yeah. look at uh, so I'm, my, in nature is uh, as most of us the bigger biggest inspiration yeah. so I would like to refer mostly as network uh, um, ecosystems as a uh, like a food web that we have in nature as well yeah. these are multiple interconnected food chains it's not just one chain so we what we now often try to do is make one chain circular but, but you need then to you're connect literally the chain, you're running actually. around in yeah. circles sometimes because the <laughs> farmer cannot use its own waste. That's a nice one. Yeah. Yeah. You need to think more web-like, so yeah. across 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 sector. So break those boundaries away. Mm -hmm. If we only think in the building industry, yeah. and I don't think about food, I have a problem. If I think yeah. about food alone, but I don't think about the yeah. fiber material yeah. that's left over after extraction, yeah. then I have another material. And it all comes comes together in your in your project. Yeah, but yeah, there are I mean, multiple you try examples of people these. that tr try to do that. There are also other designers yeah. that make yeah. use. And I think also the example of farmers and, and builders is mm -hmm. very strong because mm -hmm. they can actually create a very strong network together, yeah. for example. If, because the one has something extra, like what do I do with it? The other yeah. maybe mm -hmm. uh, needs something. And, um, but that, that, that asks for a different way of thinking. And yeah. also, then again, also trust is in, an important thing, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And would it also be able to, uh, I think, well, one of the main things right now in our, in our economy is our obsession with growth, you could say, yeah. like in different sectors, and whether it's personal growth or economical growth, both of them. Mm -hmm. um, we, just, we just talked about the fact that right now the experiments are like on a really small scale. There's the need to scale up, then we need the investments to actually do that. Um, but could it also be that maybe growth isn't one of the things within circular economy that we should be foc focusing on. Is it possible to, yeah, to think or, about or this? Growth by replication, I would call it. Yeah. So uh, there are a lot of yeah. birds in the Netherlands, but they do not all live in Rotterdam. Yeah. So we have different places and different uh, smaller ecosystems. And if you make it work locally, but this can be also made at the other side of the world. Also, so it's like an open source, the, the sort of open source also, model, maybe. Uh, maybe unique, so you might want to tweak, but the generic process might be uh, yeah. replicable, yeah. In a, if, uh, copyable in another yeah. uh, area. So then you reach scale without trying to do everything yeah. uh, in that sense, in, because then the, the, ba the, the balance is not right yeah. anymore. Yeah, so you still make impact, or you, or you make more impact, but by... Yeah, by doing uh, it locally uh, within different yeah, areas. Yeah. But it's very funny that you said, because we have been we're right now in this process of maybe attracting investors and in that process we really have to think okay but what is it that you no, it's a total, so you get this total different super way. difficult way where you do have to sometimes and that's what you were referring to before and you mm -hmm. as well you have to f uh, fit in in this in the market that exists and then try to to put a product there but f for that product to be there you have to also change their market a little yeah. bit so it's a, it's a very weird um yeah, it's it's sometimes it's sometimes a bit it contradicts a bit, and you're you're looking for to find some space, but sometimes yeah. that space is very difficult because you're not operating under the same uh, in the same terms. No. I think. Do you mm. have certain tips for other pioneers or uh, startups that are maybe having the same challenges as you? Who? Mm. Just, I, just I think well, the, I think just making a product really mm. helps, just showing that it's possible, mm. and I think. While it sometimes it's also, it makes it more confusing, I think finding uh, solve more than one problem, and that so create a more holistic product, and I think that will help you because you're inevitable for for two different sectors. Then yeah. so we're inevitable for the for both the dredging sector because we're solving a dredge problem, but also for the construction problem and municipalities because they're having the water problems within a city. I think that's. Try to find the so it's a product with flexible ser or m more services. And, yeah, yeah, and you can tell a different story every time you talk to someone. I yeah. think that really helps because it it becomes relevant for everyone, and you, they can't really ignore you anymore. Yeah, uh, and just do it. I guess. Yeah, that's the only way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's not a story, but a strategy. Actually, yeah. flexible yeah. strategy. Yeah. 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 So maybe have different scenarios of the things or the sectors that you could apply your project to, and yeah. then yeah. go from there. Yeah. So. Um, I would like to, we're not going to close up yet, but I'm just really curious to hear, uh, Pascal, I'm going to end with you, but to hear, Marianne, uh, what you hope that Blue Box is going to achieve within the, maybe let's say, the next two years or so. Let's make it concrete and small. Yeah, for Blue Box, so, so yeah, there, so there's, uh, it, 
yeah, first of all, it's not, for me, it's really, and that sounds a little bit utopian, but it's really not about blue blocks. <laughs> no, it goes so, But what I do hope to, because that's where I put my effort in, and I call it blue blocks, yeah. but because I need uh, also something tangible that yeah. others can recognize, maybe. Uh, but what I do hope is that this will be implemented. And uh, uh, starting small, so uh, the, the tip would be think big, but uh, take smaller steps. Mm -hmm. It's a cliche, but it's how things work. So I do have a longer um, few, few long, uh, longer term few? Long term few. Yeah, yeah, long term few, yeah. <laughs> We help each other <laughs> <now> also. <laughs> um, so, but you, you, uh, you act with smaller steps and then each time you, you create a high quality intervention instead of trying to aim for the, for the end goal immediately because that's uh, super frustrating and So if you have a big, bigger plan, basically just chop it, up, chop it up into it. little so, parts. The, is that this material will be implemented, really implemented yeah. in a functional building. So that's my dream. And along the way, uh, I work a lot with uh, educational programs with different universities. So that allows me also as a small startup to work interdisciplinary. Yeah. So there's chemistry, material sciences, design engineers. So they, uh, so if, if the material, even if the material will not make it, because let's be honest, uh, one out of ten only survives eh, of the innovation of I didn't want to say it. But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but then still I have achieved maybe, because now only in the last six months, like 55 students from four different uh, universities and of applied sciences also, and six different courses have been getting to know the material. And it's not about this material, but then in three years, those will be the ones graduated. Yeah. Yeah. And those will enter the construction uh, industry. Those will enter uh, design firms. They will make the decisions in the end as architect or as designer or as construction or as builder. And that, so that's also my hope. That yeah. even if the material yeah. will not make it, the, the bio-based materials in general will be much more um, familiar to yeah. all of Do us. Do you feel that creating bio-based materials yourself and then working with them is already incorporated right now in the in the educational system enough? Yeah, I came from education, so that's my uh, my advantage yeah. maybe. So I, I am still as an external lecturer now uh, educating on biodesign because if, uh, if you as a designer don't know material mm -hmm. and you don't have the knowledge or skills because it's, it is not MDF. Yeah. So it requires maybe a different way of working with the mm -hmm. material as well. Um, that was not an answer to your question, I think. <laughs> yeah, but like there are yeah. fantastic technical universities yeah. in the yeah. Netherlands, but and and there is knowledge about bio-based materials, like in Delft. But if if the campus next to it, like the construction campus, yeah. they have no idea about no. this. Uh, there is no no collaboration no. on university scale, yeah. and that's really even uh, inside the university. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, exactly. But, yeah. Sometimes it's better to have, I think, a complete. I myself studied economics and politics, which has nothing to do with what I do. But I think sometimes it even works better because you just don't know what there is, so you just figure it out yourself. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> mm. yeah I know. Yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. Learn, learn along the way. Yeah. Yeah. Learn by doing. Yeah. I have two questions actually from yeah. the audience. So I'm going to start with one. Um, do you believe that a proof of concept is enough to attract major investments? Marianne, I'll give the word to you. It will definitely help, because I can show you, and if I can also show people that are interested in the concept, then, then I, I really believe in this material yeah. also. <laughs> yeah, so it's, but I think if you can prove it to others, and then uh, look, there are other people interested in it, I, uh, uh, so I can uh, withstand uh, certain tests or norms, mm -hmm. or I can uh, con co comply to them, then why not? And does the scale of the proof of concept matter? Could it also work when, when, yeah. when the proof of concept is still quite small, but you might be able to see the potential? Yeah, also here d it depends on the, uh, on the in investment that you're, that you're asking, so things needs to be, need to be in balance. Yeah. So uh, if I say now I want to build 1,200 uh, homes with this material, then <laughs> I think I <laughs> this yeah, little sure. package that I have right here. <laughs> Good yeah. luck with that. So, yeah. um, but uh, so, so if you take but something step, tangible to start with. What, I, I, what we need now is investment to take the next step. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, because uh, uh, in some type, the lab scale is not even the most difficult part. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's then not even maybe the next step, but the step afterwards yeah. is where the biggest gap is, yeah. I yeah. think. Because uh, bigger uh, formats, uh, big, uh, bigger sizes require bigger machines, yeah. that, and that's capital. Yeah.
Well, I think that's also actually what the, what the next question is about, and it's, uh, it's for you, Pascal. Mm -hmm. What's the turning point to mass-produced biomaterials? <laughs> yeah, it's a difficult <laughs> one. Uh, I, I think the, 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 <laughs> Sorry. The, yeah, the turning point, but it's, it's still, it's again, if, if we know more about what is the, the impact in a positive way on human health, if we know better what's the impact on water quality, mm -hmm. nature, um, so and you also mean number number wise. Yes, and also if the government start to to uh, um, to give taxes for yeah. for um, CO2, yeah. um, then then it then it the turning point can go very fast yeah. because there are already hundred really nice innovations, and also in this in this uh, in this installation, we present materials you already can order. 20, 30, 40 years, it's not only about innovation, but still the construction world of other businesses don't use these materials. No. We need, also banks can help with, in this chain. Mm -hmm. It's, um, but I, the responsibility of the turning point is not only on the designer's part of the no. startup part, it's, it's the whole the society yeah, actually. And the whole chain as well. Yeah. So when you yeah. show this, uh, because at Dutch Design Week you did do like a couple of tours or some people did see it. Yes. Um, what's the feedback of the, of the construction world? I mean, when you say, well, this, this material has been, a, has been around for more than 30 years, um, I'm imagining that I would work in the construction set. I would be quite quite ashamed if I wasn't already using it, maybe. Mm. So, what was the reaction when you yeah, presented I, all these different possibilities? Yeah, we, we worked together, and and the 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 the, the, constru the, the construction companies they they collaborate. They mm -hmm. are, they are really open to new uh, to new materials. That's why they really connected to this embassy, yeah. the embassy of circular and biobased building. But also, it, it needs time, and, and um, sometimes you need um, maybe an economical crisis and, 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 and stop with the building rush and, and to give time to... Uh, Do you think a big crisis would help? Crisis always help. <laughs> <laughs> For change. <laughs> For change, yeah, or, or, or to feel the, the importance of, uh, yeah. Yeah, to switch scenarios, I think, uh, sometimes. Yeah. 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 Because that's yeah. what's going, and eh? what, exactly what you say, uh, innovation or technology and society, only when eh, the electrical car was already there also a hundred years. Yeah. Yeah. So only when it's accepted, when it's embraced, when that connection is made, then, then finally it's really innovation. Yeah. Otherwise, it's just... Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah but also I th when people feel they're allowed to try, because I think often it's just it's just a bit scary to try and if, you, if you're just going on, this, if the status quo keeps going and you just keep doing what you're doing every day, then you're not going to try the new thing. But I think only the moment where there's, there's uh, friction, I think that's the moment when, when maybe, like, if, if a tile producer right now, like, um, if people stop ordering, uh, they also have to look for different options. Yeah, it's and easier they, to implement and it they stop, away. And they stop ordering if, if there's just not enough money and yeah. there's an economic crisis, <laughs> which yeah. is then a very contradictory, yeah. But yeah. hopeful is that right now the, the investments in sustainability over the past COVID year have been amazing like they've been going up 12 percent compared to uh to last year yeah so there's definitely hope yeah. so eva um going to ask you as well mm -hmm. Waterweg, within two years what are you doing <laughs> are you still there or is the change going to happen really quickly no no we're <laughs> still there i think <laughs> no i think in two years uh i hope that um uh municipalities or or project developers can email us, do you have uh, 200 square meters of paving for us? And we can just say, yes, it will be here yeah. next month. I think that's the goal for two years. And awesome. I'm, I, have, I have confidence yeah, <laughs> that yeah. we'll, we'll make it happen somehow. Um, Pascal, to close up with you. So this project is here. Yes. Uh, it's presented right now at the festival as well. Yeah. But it's not over yet, because I no. think you still have plans for two years yes. to continue with the, with the Explode View. Yeah, yeah. What are uh, your ideas? Yeah. Um, we really need storytelling for to, for to create awareness mm -hmm. uh, on, on school level, university level, uh, in the construction world. And that's yeah. the good thing with this installation. We travel around, and this is the first, uh, the first location. But um, there are now requests from all over the world, from Canada, Australia, to Madrid Design wow. Festival. Already after a few weeks, that's great yeah. to present this. Uh, I think we are really on a turning point in that way. There is a lot of interest. And um, yeah, I think we, we can create a two years uh, um, 
traveling uh, program exhibition. travel, yeah. And it's not only uh, just presenting the materials. Actually, the idea of this installation is also to, um, to get new uh, materials and knowledge. Um, that's also, also now I really want to ask if you have uh, new innovations, materials, please send, send to our website. Yeah, I saw so you have a, you yeah. have a contact form on the website. So exactly. if people have any ideas or yeah. thoughts or insights that you can use or maybe uh, new designers that you haven't met yet, they can contact you. Exactly. It's a really interactive installation. It's not only just presenting yeah. uh, what we collect right now. And next year on the Dutch Design Week, we're going to create one by one uh, scale uh, exploded view. And this exploded view is going to be a bit different of mm -hmm. its, um, uh, than, than in this, in, in this uh, yeah. installation. But really, like, how, how can we more showing the, the, the chain? All this connection between agriculture and, and, and food and building. So and you're going to jump in the gap that we talked about before. Yes, I think it's, it's really necessary to do that, um, um, to, change, to create this uh, turning point. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. I'm really looking forward to it. Thank you, Marianne, Pascal and Eva.